Joining us now is RG Ojinika Genix with stories trending around the world. Action! Have you beat the record? Action! <laughs> Mr. Ifeni, he did so well, didn't well, he? He did well. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike the Malabites one, he couldn't do it. Oh, he didn't. He missed that. Oh. Yeah, I couldn't do the Malabites. <laughs> okay, your opportunity is here. Go on. Malabite. Yes. <laughs> well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, over 100 people are feared dead after a series of tornadoes ripped through several states and violently transformed homes and businesses into piles of rubble over the weekend. In the United Kingdom, Julian Assange, the jailed founder and publisher of WikiLeaks, suffered a mini stroke during his battle to avoid extradition to the United States on December 10th. The United States government won an appeal at Britain's High Court over his extradition. Assange is facing spying charges over WikiLeaks' publication of secret military documents a decade ago. Under sports, on Sunday, December 12th, Mercedes lodged two official protests following the hugely dramatic end to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix that saw Max Verstappen clinch his first Formula One world title ahead of Lewis Hamilton. Mercedes argued that the race director, Michael Massey, did not apply the rules correctly. The appeals were immediately rejected by Formula One officials. 24-year-old Verstappen denied Hamilton a chance to clinch his eighth world championship to become the most successful Formula One driver in history. Under entertainment, Veteran anchor Chris Wallace signed off his Fox News Sunday show after 18 years to join CNN's new streaming service, which is expected to debut in early 2022. CNN made the announcement within two hours of Wallace's last Fox show. After 18 years, I have decided to leave Fox. I want to try something new to go beyond politics to all the things I'm interested in. I'm ready for a new adventure. And I hope you'll check it out. And tributes pour in for novelist Anne Rice, who died on Saturday, December 11th, due to complications from a stroke. She was best known for her series of novels, The Vampire Chronicles, which were the subject of two film adaptations, Interview with the Vampire and Queen of the Damned. She was 80 years old. Finally, Maristela Okpala, Nigeria's representative at the 70th Miss Universe competition stunned the audience over the weekend with her costume inspired by a famous southeastern traditional masquerade called Mangwa. The three-fit tribal mask costume was created by Philippine designer Kennedy John Gaspar. This costume pays tribute to the strong will of women who reach their goals. It was inspired by a masquerade that celebrates Nigerian heritage and the strength women possess. This is this contestant's legacy as well, as she has very strong Nigerian heritage. If you're a woman who's strong, then you'll get along with Nigeria. While India's Hanas Sadhu was crowned Miss Universe 2021 on Sunday, marking the end of a controversial pageant hosted this year in Southeastern Israel. Well, congratulations to all the women, but mm. our Nigerian uh, Miss Nigeria, uh, Okpala, she was beautiful from Anambra State. Congratulations to all the Miss Universe. Yes. Well, let's begin what's trending. In the wake of the recent kidnappings across northern states in Nigeria, a video surfaced over the weekend showing a woman who narrated her ordeal in the hands of Boko Haram terrorists. Well, let's take a quick look before we come back for a discussion. I saw horror. Wallahi it a lie. It then Abiyana Kamade, the 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 Yoman Kiyama. Allah ina kanagish when I was in captivity. I saw that. I saw horror. 
I yeah. still have nightmares, bad nightmares. I say, Arike, na hayo harugobi. I can horror sin dana gani. I can horror sin dana gani. That's why I left Nigeria. That's why I'm here. But wallahi it's a lie if you have not been through what we've been through. A lot of us that have been in captivity and been raped multiple times by terrorists, you would not know. You would not know the pain. You would not know the agony. Nobody stood. Nobody believed me. Nobody said anything. Nobody helped me. No one, no one, and that's what's happening right now to our children. That's what's happening right now to our children. They're being killed. Nobody's leaving them. Nobody's saying anything. I'm angry. Nobody's accepting any refugee from northern Nigeria. Nobody. I was raped. I was raped by terrorists. I was raped. I was naked. I still have mounts on my arm. I know what's going on. I know the pain. Rufai. Mr. Ifeni, this completely broke my heart over the weekend. Look at what these terrorists are doing to our young girls. I mean, they have deprived them a life. This man, this woman is scarred for life, mm. basically. She is scarred for life. And, you know, every Sunday I go through the, you know, newspaper and I see the amount of days these are children, the children in Benyari that are still being held in captivity for over hundreds of days. They're still there. Going through the same experience this woman, you know, has just uh, talked about. I mean, it is so heartbreaking. And what got me was the fact that there are no refugee situations for them at this point mm. across the world. Oji, for a woman to scream that she was raped takes a deep place of pain in her heart. And I hope the authorities will watch the pain of this woman and use it as an impetus to fight vigorously against insurgency, terrorism, whatever it's called. Oji, enough is enough. We can't keep on breaking the hearts of our women. We can't keep on breaking the hearts of our children. We can't keep on breaking the hearts of our citizens. Like you said rightly, that pain will be with that woman forever. Oji, pain is a deep thing. I was talking to somebody about the analogy of the tree. And I was telling them about something called the cambion layer in the tree. That for every growth that happened in the tree is recorded in the cambion layer. And when you cut a tree 10 years after, by just reading the lines on the cambion layer, you know what has happened in the life of the tree. How much more a human being. If a tree can remember... How much more a human being? And that's why for those that are supporting insurgency and terrorism, it is time for that to stop. And that's why when somebody was saying we shouldn't call them bandits, I hope he watches videos like this. We shouldn't this. call them terrorists. We shouldn't call them terrorists. I hope he watches videos like this. I hope he feels the pain of women like this when some people say the things they say. I hope some people really fear God in this country. Mr. Ifeim. Well, quite heart-rendering. Now, this is somebody who was in Boko Haram captivity. Yes. And recall how many girls are still in Boko Haram captivity, yes. those young girls whose childhood have been literally ripped apart. Absolutely. And they are still there. And when you now here, somebody saying some people are repentant terrorists, and you give them all the amnesty, you give them. basically. Mm -hmm. Amnesty, you treat them kindly, yet you have not given succor to the victims of the brutality of these Boko Haram terrorists. We still have hundreds of Chibo girls in captivity. Mm. Leah Charibu is still in captivity. Amongst, if you look at school children in captivity, 181 days, federal government yes. college, Benin Yari. Yari, 181 days, they are still in captivity. The Better Baptist High School, that too. Kajuna, 163 days in captivity. We don't know what they are passing through. 
So there must be um, effort. People who go through this, government must also make effort to get at them and help them to get over this, pro this uh, trauma. Because like that woman, she's scared for life. And there are many more out there who have passed through this. So government cannot just be talking about, oh, amnesty for repentant uh, terrorists. When victims of terrorism are not being given proper uh, assistance to get over this uh, plight they've gone through. It's a really sad situation, really sad. We pray for their release. In another development, the only of Ife, Oba Adeyaya, Enito, Ogunwusi, while reacting to the spate of insecurity in the country, berated politicians and security operatives at an event attended by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajia Biamila, among others, the monarch, dared them to raise their hands if they can stay in their constituencies in peace for just a week. Let's take a look. I'll be very happy if anybody can raise up their hand and say I can go to my area of constituents, my local governments, and I can stay there in peace for one week. Who can do it here? Including our gatekeepers. Who can do it here? Including the Senate President. Including the Speaker that you are taking care of. What's the essence of you being a politician? That you cannot even move around freely. You cannot. Nobody, are you, are you, do you think Abuja is only Nigeria? Or Lagos is only Nigeria? 36 states of this country? Some people are there, you left them, you abandoned them, and you are making laws and you are administering. What are you administering? I do not know. So let us talk to ourselves very seriously. The people that are not ghosts, these people that are agitating left and right, we need to engage them. Well, he couldn't have said it more correctly, Mr. Ifeni. Well, he the just hit the nail on the, the head. It's the brutal truth yes. that mm. he has told them. Because Absolutely. many politicians cannot even travel by road to their constituents. No. Yes. No. And the spate of insecurity across the country is there for all to see. And Nigerians are the victims. Our politicians, yes, they find a way to get around it. Convoy of policemen, of course, they, if they have to attend a function in their community, they have loads of security operatives all around them. But the average Nigerian, whom they represent, are having a torrid time with insecurity, being kidnapped here and there. Yes. So I think the only of Ife, or Jaja II, is, was, he was put on when he, he, he spoke truth to power, yes. as it were. As Rufai would always mm -hmm. say, let's speak truth let's to speak power. Let's speak truth to power. And the question we should ask ourselves is, who are the leaders there to serve? Are they not the people? The citizens are supposed to be the kings, and the leaders are our servants. But when the people that are supposed to serve us are now the kings, and we, the citizens, are left to go and die, then you know something is wrong. The leaders should do right by the people. Mm. They are there to serve Nigerians. They are there to have sleepless nights so that Nigerians can sleep in the night. Absolutely. We'll take another story. Former presidential aide, Doni Okube, over the weekend, warned human rights lawyer Femi Falana against speaking ill about the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, in a post shared on his Facebook page titled Femi Falana and the Drunkenness of Public Advocacy. Okupe cautioned the legal practitioner over the comment he made allegedly that Pastor Adeboye was building business centers and not churches. Well, Okupe wrote that he waited for Falana to debunk the comment within 72 hours before he decided to publish the post. Well, in the post, Donya Kukwe wrote that Femi Falana should stay in the area of his core competence and not dabble into religion, and that casting aspersions on great men of God like Pastor Adeboye was unwise and very dangerous. Pastor Emmanuel Efeni, mm -hmm. <laughs> over to you. Well, now, uh, what do you mean? I am not a pastor, well, unless, for the record. Okay, you're not Elder. a pastor. <laughs> Elder. <laughs> I'm just a, a lay reader. Yes. Lay reader. yes. Now... If the comment attributed to 
Femi Falana S A N is what he said. Perhaps uh, you say it's uncharitable to uh, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, mm -hmm. who himself uh, has been well in the vanguard of uh, dispensing the gospel in his own way over time, and he has huge followership. Uh, perhaps you need to also break down what. Falana has said, but I don't know the context in which he said that. Well, I guess that, basically a lot of people are talking <laughs> about how much money Pastor uh, Enoch Adebue makes or has or all well, of that. You so see, is no, it a church so or if, a business if, center? No, if you That's have question. big followers, yes, the, the tendency of making no, money. They, pay, they do offerings yes. in all churches. <laughs> so the bigger your congregation, the bigger your offering. So okay. let's let's state that clear. Okay. People also pay tithe. Those who have the faith believe to pay tithe. That when you do so, you get blessings. So the bigger your congregation, the bigger the tithe. The pastor will also get. Okay. The church will get. Now, if you look at the Orthodox churches, Roman Catholic, represent to be one of the richest churches in the in the world, even within Nigeria. If you go to their schools like my. My, my girls did, my daughters attended their school. I paid through the nose. Mm -hmm. If that is not business, I don't know what you call business. Mm. <laughs> so I don't think Pastor Debo should be singled out for that kind of dragon, uh, whether he's establishing churches or business. He's, um, well, dispensing the gospel for yeah. Christ in his own way, and he has followership. He has brought people into the part of rectitude in doing so also. So I don't think he should Well, well all right. Uh, Rafai, who is to question religious leaders at this point? Okay, so it, there are many sides to this. Yes. At first, we can't divorce the fact that church-owned businesses, because as they get bigger, but also let's look at the impact of these businesses on society. I keep citing back historically that the reason why we even had education in the first place was because of people like the Catholic Church just at the University of Paris in the 10 hundreds and the likes. They have helped with advancement of society. They've made a lot of people's lives better. In this case, Pastor Enoch Adejaya Adeboye has been in the vanguard of making people's lives better in the country. Collectively across board, with churches too in this country, they've helped in no small way to make people's lives better. But there's another side to it. And when you look at all the shenanigans that happen in society, and that's where people have a right to, to also call the man of God to order and say, yes, you've been given this flock, yes. but don't forget you will account for it. So, have you done enough? Can you do more? Can you improve what you do for people? Can you stand in the vanguard and say the way it is? So, those are the important questions we should ask ourselves. But we can't divorce the, ourselves from the fact that, yes, they run businesses, but some of them too will say, okay, this is a charitable business to be able to impact the lives of people. That is the point. And on the flip be side of it, some will also argue that yeah. when they go to universities owned by churches, they pay through their nose that their members in those in churches cannot even afford to go to those universities. So there are various sides of the argument. But one thing you can take away from the church is that the church has done a lot to empower the lives of people. And at the same time, the church has been found wanting most times. Right. But what is most important in all of this criticism is that the men of God should remember that they will give account to God so they had better do right by God and do right by men. Well said, Mr. Hosseini. We'll take our final story in the United Kingdom. Following the rising cases of the Omicron coronavirus variant, quarantine protocols in the country have become stiffer over the weekend. A video of hotel guests standing out in the harsh cold weather after they were ushered out of their hotel rooms when a fire alarm went off, circulated online. Let's take a quick look. Right, hi everyone. We are in quarantine in Softel Hotel. This is supposed to be social distancing and there's nothing of that sort in this building. We had a fire alarms go off this morning and now we are stranded in very cold and unbearable weather. And everyone is out everywhere. This is where we are. And we paid £2,285 per room. And this is the treatment we are getting right now. The whole thing is shambolic. It's crazy. 
absolutely crazy. Absolutely ridiculous. Beyond belief. Beyond imagination. We are supposed to be very infectious people, but we are outside here. Stranded like this. <laughs> this is absolutely crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Crazy. Well, this was so scary when I saw it over the weekend, <laughs> guys. These are people that are supposed to be infected, but unfortunately, we don't have much time to chat on it quickly. That's what $3,000 will get you in Boris Johnson. Unbelievable. Very unfair. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you tomorrow.